I have a formal complaint to lodge. I wanted to sleep in this morning, but the sun wouldn't let me do it. I even put a pillow over my head, hoping that the sun would get tired and go away. But no, it stayed. It's all your fault, son. You're never late for work. You never take a day off. You're just not human. You're not. You're a star. What makes day and night? Um, because the earth is going around the sun. The sun makes it um, um, daytime and the moon makes it nighttime. The sun and the moon because earth spins around and half of the side is facing the moon while the other side is facing the sun. The rotating of the earth. When we spin around the sun, we spin around and there's sun on one side. I don't know. <laughs> the earth turns around with um, all the other planets. Yeah, um, it moves round and round in different ways, so you get sun and the dark. The sun and the moon. The sun makes the day and the moon makes the night. The sun shines so you can see and the moon comes up and it makes the sky black so you can't see. By the sun going down. Um, by the world spinning around. When the sun's there and the world turns around, the sun only shines on half of it. You really got to wonder what makes a sun? What makes a sun tick, so to speak? First thing to remember is the sun doesn't revolve around us. We, the Earth, revolve around the sun. How's that for an ego trip for the sun? The centre of things. Be pretty cool at parties, wouldn't it? So where does the sun go to at night? Why is it replaced by the moon? Is it like shift work? Or maybe the sun is like a great big light bulb that gets turned off at night? This is the Auckland Observatory. It's full of great information and helpful people who know a lot about stars and planets and hopefully about what makes night and day. Let's go take a look. Oh, hello, Susie. Hi. I'm John Dunlop. I'm one of the teachers here. Welcome aboard. Oh, thank you very much, John. Hey, can you help me? I'm trying to work out what makes day mm. and what makes night. Well, that's easy, Susie. We've got a fancy model of the Earth right over here. Ooh, very fancy. Mm. From where we stand, we are in complete sunlight. Well, yes, that's what it looks like from your point of view, but come round over here and we'll look from another angle. See, over here, it's all dark. Oh, OK, so that half of the world is in night time and this half is in daytime. Indeed. And if you look at New Zealand just down here... That's right. Must be about mid-afternoon. Yes, indeed. OK, New Zealand. Put your pyjamas on. It's about time to go to bed. Good night, New Zealand. Good night, kids. So the sun is sort of acting like a big torch, is it? Yeah, that's right. It's just super giant torch, ultra powerful, mm -hmm. but it can only shine on one side. What I really wanted to check out was New Zealand, so I could wish us a very good morning. There you are, it's breakfast time. Breakfast time. What I want though is longer. Well, because of, oh, excuse me. <sighs> I wanted to get more sleep. I wanted to find out exactly where I should be able to get the most hours of darkness. Longer night hours. For sleeping, that is. And the very spot was Antarctica. Cold, but dark. Mmm, sleeping bag. Hotty. Ooh, cosy. That's right. You go to Antarctica and you can have night time for two whole months. <sighs> right, but make sure you've got a very thick sleeping bag. Sure. That sounds like me, though. If I want more nighttime hours, I just have to go to Antarctica. Well, Susie, do you know, some people think that the sun goes round the Earth. But in actual fact, it's the other way around. The Earth goes round the sun. And you're going to show us how. 
you're going to be the earth out there, and I'm going to be the sun. So off you go, away you go, run over there. Now, that's right, 150 million Ks, good, stop. <coughs> now, what, okay, now, every day you've got to spin around once. And you've got to go around, and you've got to take a whole year to go all the way around. A okay? whole year? A whole year. <laughs> right, I'm going to count for you. On your marks, get set, go. Yes, one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, six days, seven days, <sighs> one week. Oh, she's weak. <laughs> That wasn't too bad, was it, Susie? Oh, Earth to sun. Oh, I've had enough. Oh. This part of the world is in daylight, and this part of the world has gone to no eyes. Look out, New Zealand, it's your time for bedtime. Get those teeth brushed, put those nighties on. Ready, steady, night, night. And across the Tasman, it's time for Australia to go to bed. All oh, those koala bees oh, and kangaroos. Good night. And night night, fishies. Especially those sharks with big teeth. John, I'm curious. Which country gets to go to bed first? Well, that's a tricky one, Susie. You see, over here we say that's yesterday. And on the other side of an international dateline, we say it today. Ah, so New Zealand goes to bed first because they're closest to the dateline. That's right. Ah. But I hate to say that's just a human invention. Ah, this isn't really true at all. The world doesn't have lines on it. It's just water out there, Susie. This New Year's Eve, there are going to be parties all over the world. And I can use the international dateline to get me to all of them. I know that the first country to party on down is going to be New Zealand, closely followed by Australia, Thailand, India, Egypt, Scotland, Morocco, France, America, and Jamaica man. I really probably couldn't go to every country for a party, but maybe I could through the internet. There are different time zones for different countries. Why don't you see if you can work out what time it is now in England or Canada? Or maybe even Tibet. If you need more information about international time zones, head to your phone book, or the library, or check out the internet. Or while you're there, go to my website. I'm at www.suzy.co.nz. You can write to me at Tree Hut Productions, P.O. Box 34307, Birkenhead in Auckland. Hey, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again soon. Kakite. Casting fee.